Welcome! Today I would like to cover another game from the second league. This time I played with the white pieces against the Hungarian 2600 Grandmaster Imre Balog. And um, our team played against Koblenz and lost without much of a chance. Um, I opened the game with knight to f3 and he played the Slav. So in that position I had quite a few games already with a move uh, e2 to e3. And for this game I decided to, to deviate because I thought he would probably not be prepared as much against the exchange and I decided to go for the exchange Slav. The exchange Slav has a bit of a drawish reputation but I think objectively it's probably not worse or better than any of the other lines. And we reach the symmetrical position of the exchange Slav. So sometimes he went for lines with a6 and had a bit of a look at, uh, at that but okay this time he decided to go for the main line with bishop to f5. And after e3, e6, we reach the first critical juncture. Um, if white is desperately playing for a draw, you can go for the move bishop to d3. When usually after something like takes, takes, uh, bishop d6, takes, takes, we um, often see shake hands between players of equal strength or players who want to finish their games early. That said, uh, I don't think playing for a draw like that is um, yeah is what you should do. So I went for the move queen to b3 instead, which at least keeps some uh, keeps the game alive. And I thought maybe this line gives a little bit of advantage to white, and I can play without incurring too much risk. So I hit b7. Um, he played bishop to b4, which is the main uh, theoretical move here. And here white has two options: either to go for the move knight to e5. Um, or for the move bishop to b5. I think both moves are fine. Probably objectively um, they are close to equal both of them, but I think black has to be a little bit careful. My opponent went for castles and now I just took on c6. And all of this was preparation. Black goes rook to c8. And uh, yeah, now he threatens to take back with a rook on c6. So white goes knight to e5 to protect the bishop on c6, uh, but black has this maneuver knight to g4, hitting the knight. Um, this is all still theory, and uh, yeah, as I said, I also had prepared this for the game. Takes, takes, and now the move queen to b4. Yeah, and at this point, um, my opponent deviates from the main trodden paths, so usually black in this position goes for the move rook takes c6. And after queen b7, you don't really have queen a5 because of b4. So you have to go for queen c8, threatening uh, rook c1. But here white can just take, take, and go for castles. And I had seen quite a few games uh, in this line recently. And um, yeah, I mean, while objectively it should still be a draw, I think it's not so easy to play this for black. And of course, with white, you can play without any sort of risk. So I would have been quite happy to go to such an endgame. Instead of that, my opponent decided to take back with a b-pawn. Obviously, this weakens the squares, the dark squares, even more. Um, but I think here I um, should have been very, very precise to get any sort of an advantage. So I think bc6 is definitely not as bad as I, I hoped it would be in the game. So the way to play for an advantage here is to either go rook c1 immediately or maybe h3 immediately, say something like this, and to go then uh, with a move rook to c1. With the idea, whenever he goes a5, I can now play queen to d2 and next move castles. And the crucial thing about having the queen on d2, so let's say some line like this, um, castles, is that now this bishop cannot come to e2 and to b5. And this will be a motive which is going to be quite important um, in the remainder of the game. So to really get something against bc, I think you need to play rook c1 or uh, h3 here. I played a little bit superficial move here, um, the move castles, which also appeared in one game um, by Leiting GA against Musichuk. But um, yeah, I think this is objectively not the best. Because now he can go for a5, that's what he did. And after queen d5, he just went for a4. And now after a4, he already has this threat of playing rook to, uh, bishop to e2 and bishop to b5 and creating this very stable formation here. So 
to avoid that now I had to waste a move. So instead of just having the queen on d2 and being free to play rook fc1 or something, I now had to waste the move to um, prevent bishop to e2. And of course, yeah, this is um, not ideal to have this kind of decent rook um, blocking the pathway of the bishop. Um, but yeah, basically here, I think I had already spoiled my, my advantage from the opening. Played a queen to d7, a logical move, bringing the queen to b7, and um, hitting the b2 pawn. So maybe, maybe the last chance to play for something could have been something like bishop to d6, but I don't really think that this is anything. So let's say takes, takes. Well, the bishop is not yet here, then it would be would be nothing at all, but I think black has a plan like playing f6 and potentially later bring the bishop to e8, and once he achieves that, the position should be um, close to a draw. That said, it's probably better than what I did in the game, to go queen to a3. And yeah, from here we play some logical moves. So he played uh, rook to a8, and my main problem is that I don't really have a plan here. Uh, he's kind of solid, he can overprotect c6 with uh, rook c8 and rook a6 if necessary. And then he can slowly improve this bishop, maybe bring the bishop back to g6 or maybe even to e8 in some, some cases. Or once I uh, leave the um, square e1, maybe also to go for this maneuver bishop e2 to bishop b5. So, um, yeah, I created some space. And now, because I, th I thought, okay, I cannot really improve my position that much, I went for the move uh, b3. But I think uh, after that move, it's objectively just uh, completely equal. He took and now just exchanged and went for the move rook to a6 and yeah here I thought okay the game is probably going to end in a draw pretty soon rook c3 which is maybe not the most precise I mean maybe I can go rook a1 immediately or I could also do something else but okay rook c3 f6 and yeah I, I missed that move to be honest in the game um, because now he can just protect this pawn with bishop to e8 and now the rook on c3 looks kind of kind of stupid. But of course, in such a position, it's not a matter of um, tempi. So I thought um, yeah, it should still just be a draw now. And that's why after uh, these moves in bishop to c7, I offered a draw. However, my opponent is rated 2600 and probably thought, OK, position is objectively a draw, but I can continue against a lower rated player. And he declined the draw with a move rook to a1. Still, I think objectively it should not be much. I just took the rook and went for king to h2. And uh, yeah, the next move moves he played uh, quite well. Um, even though he, or we were both a little bit short on time, he went for the move h5, fixing the structure. And of course, you can see, I mean, if at some point the black king is here and maybe the bishop comes to e4 and then you fix like this, you could see how black could be better at some point. Uh, so I had to stop that, just go for um, h4 and bring my king as well. And now just prevent him from entering on e4. And uh, again, I think, um, yeah, it's completely equal. If he goes g5, I can just take hg and he will never break through with e5. Um, and so I thought, yeah, it will be shake hands pretty soon. Yet my opponent continued with his move uh, rook to a6. I attacked and he played rook to a7. And maybe in this position, um, because he was pushing a bit much, maybe I could have gone uh, this move rook c5 um, with the idea of now threatening rook to a5 when probably objectively white is uh, slightly better because then I get control of the a-file and he has to first care about the g7 pawn. And so, um, that would have been nice. Yeah. Note that if he goes rook a3 here, I have this sneaky move b5, um, which, I mean, if he takes, I have uh, something like rook c8, um, or maybe even e4 immediately, could be even stronger, e4 check, and uh, rook c7 also with this double threat, and um, white is clearly better. So um, I missed the sneaky move rook to c5, and instead I was uh, focused on yeah, just repeating moves because I thought, okay, he's not doing much, so I can just repeat moves. 
yeah, he played bishop to d7. Note that this would be a terrible blunder. So I went back to d6, e5. Um, yeah, not much is happening. He finally kicks away my bishop and improves his, uh, his bishop. And yeah, it's just a bit of playing back and forth. Same motive again, I can't take on g7 because of rook g8. Yeah, and here he now comes with g5. He finally has fixed e4 because if he doesn't play e4 beforehand, then I can always just take on g5. Here it's now not so easy for me anymore to take on g5, so I have to be a bit careful here. Uh, actually, not to be not to be worse suddenly. Um, and uh, I did that by playing the move rook to f2, threatening f e. He had to go back with the king, and uh, now he played the move uh, rook to a1. Um, maybe this move would have been interesting with the idea of f takes e, just rook takes e3, check rook f3. Could be one line. I think maybe that's also playable for white. Or maybe even going for for this sacrifice. When even though now black is a pawn up, it's also not totally clear to me if black is really better here or um, if yeah I don't have any uh, sufficient counterplay here. So I think... Objectively, probably he should have tried this rook a3, but um, should have also ended in a draw. Instead, he went for rook a1. And if you want, you can pause the video here and you can see how white can force a draw. All right, I hope you found it. I played the move f takes e, d takes e. If you didn't find it at this point, maybe another chance to pause the video. And uh, yeah, the solution is this very nice move, uh, d5 check. Because uh, if he takes with the king, I just win by force. Yeah, so he has to uh, either give up the defense of the bishop or run into this nasty uh, discovery check. And if he takes with the pawn, I have this beautiful rook takes f6, king f6, and bishop to d4. Um, with just a draw I take here and the position is a draw. Yeah, maybe one should note that um, after cd5 I also would have had the option to still continue with a move bishop to d4, but let's say after takes and something like a rook b1 takes king e7, I don't really see why I'm better here, so uh, I felt like it's okay to accept the draw at this point. So uh, yeah, that's what happened and after d5 check takes, takes, king takes. He offered um, a draw and um, yeah, this was uh, agreed. Well, I think um, I actually got something from the opening. I was also substantially ahead on the clock, but uh, I did not manage to play in a very precise way. And I think if you play these lines with white where you play for a small edge, then you need to be extremely precise. And I failed to do that. Um, Played some superficial moves, in particular castles, uh, straight away, which allowed him this maneuver, bishop e2, bishop to b5. And so I always had to basically um, give one per, uh, one piece guarding this e2 square with this rook on e1, which definitely uh, took away any serious chances to play for an advantage. Then in the end game, I think he tried his best to push a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, it even felt like he was maybe getting somewhere at some point, at least putting some pressure, but I mean, objectively, it was of course always within the drawing margin. So yeah, this was the first game from the weekend and I can promise you the second one is going to be a bit more exciting than this one. Thanks a lot for watching.